So hi guys, welcome back to our channel and to the 27th episode of the Forex Market Breakdowns. So for the last two weeks, we never did the market breakdowns. We've been busy with other things occupying our time, especially the course. So we are almost done. We are almost there and we'll be announcing the dates for the release very soon. So for those who've been asking, you can now start planning yourself and preparing for learning the in-depth breakdowns of how we go about trading the markets. So apart from that, markets have been moving sideways mostly for the last two weeks. We have not seen so much momentum. We expected some trend direction changes. We expected some momentum to pick up, which has not happened precisely because of the interest rate decision, which will be announced tomorrow by the US. Most investors are looking forward to a rate cut by 25 basis points. President Trump is pushing for 50 basis points. He wants the dollar to weaken relative to other currencies. And his tweets can reflect this clearly or when he pinpoints that he prefers Mario Draghi to the Federal Reserve Chairman. We don't pay special attention to what happens in the fundamental space. We prefer looking at what is happening on the technical space and on the charts. And that's why we do these breakdowns. But at the same time, we can't ignore the fundamentals. So looking at fundamentals, what do you expect? If we get a 25 basis point rate cut, which means that the Federal Reserve will be easing and we'll get more money supply and perhaps we'll even get a boost to the economy. We're not sure these things will turn out that way. But if that is the play that is going to happen, then what do we expect? We expect a weaker dollar. We expect commodities to be moving upwards. And this comes as oil, gold, <coughs> silver and copper. So I'm looking at these commodities really well. I'm trying to pay special attention to where they'll be moving. So why do we expect a weaker dollar and commodities to be moving higher? When you look at history or how markets have been moving, when you have interest rates being lowered, it means money will be yielding less. This means currencies, are basically lower interest rates means devaluations of currencies. When people are devaluing currencies, obviously investors move their money to assets which will give them returns because currencies are not yielding anything because of the low interest rate. This means that commodities are likely to go higher. But if you look at gold precisely, let me pay special attention to the commodity gold. Gold is pricing in a move to probably 1500 and 1700. And I've done articles on this on the website. You can check them out. I'm not sure when we'll get there. I cannot tell you. We'll get here in the next six months or in the next a year, a year and a half. But we do expect gold to be moving higher and we don't expect it to move lower than 1360 unless there's a big change in fundamentals, which I don't see with trade tensions, with a weaker dollar, with all banks trying to devalue their currencies. And that is a very good thing for gold and I expect gold to be moving higher. Oil, I cannot tell you with absolute certainty because when you look at history, oil will always go lower before an economic recession. We're not sure when we'll be getting a recession and if we'll be getting one. Mario Draghi was talking on Tuesday and he never cited a recession. He only said that growth was slowing down, but he said he never, he's not seeing recession. He's not seeing a recession coming anytime soon. So if we don't get a recession, probably oil might move up with other commodities. But if oil is moving substantially lower, then probably, probably it shows that we could be getting weaker data. So I'll show you the technicals and the levels I'm watching for the different ideas that I've been telling you. And I'll just jump straight and do the art, the, the several pairs that I'll be doing. Unfortunately, Caleb won't be doing the breakdown with me today. So he'll be updating you on the site and in the articles. You can check out the articles, but I'll try and do three or four pairs, including some of the pairs that he does, because I think I have an insight into what he might be picturing or what he might be posting in your group. So I'll just go down straight to the charts. So we'll start off with oil on the weekly chart and on oil on the weekly chart, I'm torn between two probable scenarios, long term for the direction on the weekly chart. But as you go down to the lower time frames, probably we'll get a setup that you can be able to execute, which has a higher probability of playing out. Anyway, on the weekly chart, we have this downward sloping channel. And this downward sloping channel was formed after we had a retracement to touch the 61.8 retracement level. And we had a collapse back all the way to 52.5 actually we came slightly higher above the $50 mark, so probably it touched 50.5 before starting to move higher again. But we never made a new low. We never made a new low. Instead, we had a slight correction again to 59.5, which was again followed by a sell-off to touch the 61.8, which was followed by a sell-off to touch $55 mark. So $55 mark, which is also in confluence with the pivot point, is becoming a crucial level, which if not taken out, probably 
will end up respecting this Fibonacci zone and probably the markets will come back. So this is 61.8 and we may get a move back up to 75 and ultimately $80, especially if we get a rate cut and the markets respond to the rate cut like they do historically and we are not expecting a recession. So that's oil on the daily chart. So probably we'll get a move back up all the $75 mark and $80 mark. But if we go down to the daily chart, <coughs> so this is my daily chart, and I have the downward sloping channel that you saw on the weekly chart. This one is a different one. So we had the first bounce, second bounce, third bounce, then we had this correction. We had a move lower, which was again, we had a false breakout, and again we had a move coming back to the channel. The whole of last week I was holding a soft the whole of last week I was holding a short position on oil and the markets consolidated because I executed my short position at 57.5 and the markets pretty much consolidated for the whole of that week. I expected some bearish momentum to come in, probably pushing it lower to 52.5, a touch of this S1 and probably a touch of this line before we go up. But clearly you can see the markets are rejecting that idea and it seems we'll be going higher. So if we get a break past 57.5, my first target would be 59.5 before making new highs at the $60 mark and ultimately 62.5. Not $60 mark, but the 62.5 after the 59.5. But if we don't get a good close above 57.5, especially today and tomorrow, I'm watching for today and tomorrow because of tomorrow's rate announcement decision. So tomorrow will be... Will be crucial in determining the long-term direction that I'll be playing this currency. But for now, I'm sitting on the fence, I'm waiting, I'm looking at what is happening. If I go down to the 4-hour, I still have my short setup, giving me a signal that probably will be getting a short setup. You can see oil has consolidated between 55 and 57.5. So we have this consolidation. We had a break, a retest, but we never had a good continuation to send us below the S3 mark. If R1 is respected today, which is also highly probable, and probably we'll be getting this move back up to S2. But if it's not respected, which can also happen. And if I go down to the hourly chart, probably I can show you what is going on down there. So on the hourly chart, one hour chart. So on the hourly chart, yeah. In the early chart, I have this channel, a correction channel. So probably we'll also be getting new highs at the 58 mark. So 57, 58, 57.5, 58, that's the target you're looking for to decide the ultimate direction of oil because you might also get this move to touch this R2. That will be a correction of this downward trend that you had and then you'll have the sell-off sending this pair lower ultimately to 52.5 or you could have a break past 58 and a move back upwards sending this pair higher. So 7.5 I'm looking for that target above about at a close above $58 mark then you go long all the way to 59.5 first 62.5 64.5 ultimately all the way to $80 mark definitely I won't be holding but that's how it played if we respect 58 then probably we'll get a correction breaking past 55 and going lower to 52.5 so between 57.5 no sense of direction 7.5 and 55 still watching not decided I'm still hanging, waiting to see where the markets will be moving. So I'll go down to the next pair. So this is gold and I'll start off from the weekly chart. For a long time, gold has been trending and trading below the 1360 mark. So if you go back to history, all the way from 2013, yeah, this is 2013. You can see clearly gold has not gone above the 1400 mark. But finally, we had a break. This is a solid break and we had a move back to 1424. But after that move, gold has been sitting on a consolidation for a long time. And for the last five weeks, probably a month, gold has not done anything. What does that mean? I think gold will be making a big move to ultimately 1500 before we have a correction, any correction. After the interest rates are announced, probably we'll see a move to 1475 and ultimately 1500 in a straight leg. So if I remove this channel to make things clear for you, I remove this channel then it is clear that world has been sitting in this consolidation so one touch two touch three touch then we had a breakout which was a false breakout because if we, this real breakout was real then we never expected the markets to sink back lower below 1425 so because markets are trading below 1425 we could probably expect that we can still get a move to 1405 and i'll show you why i think we can still get a move to 1405 but before that we cannot discount 
this trend line. So we have a trend line which has been bouncing. So we had the first bounce, then we had a move to 14.50, and now we have a bounce coming in at 78.6 on gold. So this is gold 78.6, yeah. And you can see that it seems like the markets are set up for move back up. And honestly, that's what I'm looking for long term. I'm looking for a trade to take me higher to 14.50 and ultimately 14.75. If I go down to the 4-hour chart, however, so this is my 4-hour chart, I have a different setting. So this is the same consolidation that we had on the daily chart, and on the 4-hour chart you can see I have two channels. So we have this first channel, so we have this one which is the broad one, marked in blue, and you can see we had a bounce, the second bounce, then you had a move to touch it, which created new highs at 14.50, and now we have not touched it again. So if we get a move lower, we might be coming to retest this line and touch ultimately 1405, squeezing all these longs which have been executed at this point. But if we don't get enough selling pressure, then probably we may end up respecting the other channel. So I can remove this one and we may end up with this clean setup, which is also highly probable. And we'll get a move back up all the way to 1475. So I'm not in the gold position for now. I have my levels marked between 1450 and 1435 and 1450. So if I remove this one, let me just hide it. Yeah. So this is the hourly chart. I, I've decided to go down to the hourly chart to show you precisely what I'm looking for. If we don't get a close above 1430, which is this mark, I'm still short on oil to 1405. And you can see clearly the markets have opened and this line has been respected. And it seems we'll be getting some selling pressure. I will be selling to 14.05 if we get enough substantial momentum. My stops come above 14.30. Expect a move to touch 14.05 before tomorrow, probably in the evening before the Feds announce their rates. But, 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 we cannot discount the fact that we may probably have a break past this one and a move back up. So if we get a break above, a close above 14.30, then I'll be jumping long, playing it as a momentum play expecting the markets to rally all the way to 14.75. Those are the two probable scenarios that I'm looking for on gold. And if I use my Fibonacci to measure this one, it sits on the 71 level mark. So 71 level mark, probably 27.2 comes in at 14.05 and we'll get a move to touch 14.05. So that's my outlook on gold. And I gave you my outlook on oil. So let me go down now to the next currency that I'll be doing, Euro, Dollar. So this is euro dollar on the weekly chart. We'll start off from the weekly chart trying to understand what is happening on this pair right now. So last week we saw euro slide substantially after Mario Draghi announced that he is seeing weaker, a weaker economy in Europe and he's expecting to do some stimulus. And we saw euro lose momentum all the way from the 1.1250 and now currently we are trading at the 1.1250 mark. So probably 60 pip collapse. And you can see last week's candle close was obviously signaling more shots coming into the market. But if you look at this channel, then you get clearly that we had a break. And now this is a retest of the channel. So if you respect the level we are currently trading on, and I'll show you on the daily chart, then you could probably see Euro making a move back up. But I'm highly skeptical on that move. I expect the Euro to sink lower probably to 1.095, completing this Fibonacci pattern, which was formed sometimes back. So you can see we had a drop, 61.8, nice pattern showing that some bears are coming in and probably 27.2 comes in at the 1.10. So if we are going down lower, 1.105 will act as my first target and ultimately I'll be looking for 1.095 before getting the reversal because I don't expect Euro to be weaker to the dollar that much but I'll be looking at what the markets will be doing. On the daily chart, this is the daily chart. So on the daily chart, my levels are marked in a better way. And you can see clearly this is the move that I'm talking about. So this drop from around 1300 to 70 all the way to 1.1250. This level has proven to be a key level. The markets have been visiting this level for quite some time now. So we had the first touch, we had the second touch, and now we have a consolidation again coming in at this point. So unless we get a strong close above here, I'll be looking for 1.1095, a retest of this line also, before we get a move back up, probably to retest this. We can also get a move on the 4-hour chart, like I will show you. So this is the 4-hour chart, and my levels again well marked. 
you can see clearly we are rejecting the 1.1250 so probably we'll get a move back up to touch 1.12 before getting a drop but p is currently looking like a good sell off point and probably today or tomorrow we'll get a break of 1.125 rally to 1.104 and ultimately 1.095 I won't be changing my short bias on euro unless we get a break above 1200. Obviously, removing this, uh, breaking past this channel, so this channel will now not be useful to me. And after that, if we get a break which signals a reversal, then probably I'll be looking for longs. But euro, unless we close above 1450, I'm still short. The markets have been ranging between these two levels for quite some time now. A 300 pip zone, a consolidation which I can show you clearly, I can see. So unless we get a close above 14.50 and a move back upwards, then I don't think we'll be getting a reversal on euro anytime soon. And I'll be staying short, going where the markets are taking me. I don't believe in overselling and overbought. I believe in going where the markets take me. And probably right now they're taking me lower to 1.104 and ultimately 1.095. So that's my outlook on euro can decide how to play your positions you can decide to wait for a break to execute a short position to 1.01 .01. you can decide to wait for a pullback or you can decide to wait for a drop to 1.014 and you can buy for the pullback which i think will be coming in to retest this level before the collapse to 1.095 so that's my outlook probably give you more updates on the group and on the website so this is GBP USD on the weekly chart and last week we've over the last two weeks I've seen the pound lose a substantial number of pips dropping all the way from 1.275 to 1.210 which is the lowest price that this commodity this currency has hit so what do you think the pound will be doing yesterday I gave out a trade on GBP USD for those who on the group and you saw the trade and currently we are up 400 points so if you took advantage of that trade you are banking some money alongside me. Anyway, looking at this pound, we expected this drop from the technical analysis, the technical picture. This drop was highly painted and most people blame it on fundamentals, but the technicals could have shown you that these markets will probably slide lower, especially after we had a break below this S1 mark, which was the last level that was acting as a good support level. So. I still don't think that the pound has completed the move lower. I'm looking for 1.20, 1.19 ultimately. And that comes in at the, yeah, 1.195 ultimately. Only 100 pips lower. So there isn't much that is left to selling this one. If we will, we will not be getting a break past 1.21. And I can promise you that breaking past this level will prove to be quite a task. But if we get past this level, Probably we'll see the pound sink lower to these levels 1.12, 1.10. We are not sure yet, but I think this will require a big catalyst like a no deal Brexit. So, between now and then, I don't think we'll be getting a break below this, but I could be wrong and wrong, very, very wrong. So, on the daily chart, looking at what is happening on the daily chart, I still have my channel, and you can see clearly we rejected this level. We had a correction, some slight consolidation. Then yesterday officially we had this sell off for the last three days, taking this way from 1.25 to 1.21 and you can see clearly we are rejecting this level. So probably 1.21 is my level. If we get some good bullish signal then I'll be buying to 1.23, covering a pullback for this move before we get a break past 1.21, which I'm highly skeptical we will get. So my next level, if we get a break past 1.21, will come in at the 1.19 level. So if I label that level, this will come in at the 1.19 level. And this is my next level if we get a break past 1.21. So probably 400 pips, but I'd have to wait for a close of this in the lower time frames to confirm. If I go down to the 4-hour chart, yeah, you can see some bullish momentum is already coming back up after we had this channel taken out. So... <clears throat> if we use our Fibonacci to try and just make it clean, simple and crisp, probably we'll get a move to S1, 1.23, 2.350. Yeah, we are looking for these Fib levels, but I try and avoid this 38.2. I think it's still too early to buy. So probably 61.8 or 78.6, but most probably 61.8, 1.24, which was the last major level before we had this sell-off, taking this pair below 1.23 and sending it lower to 1.21. 
So that's my outlook on pound and hope you guys will incorporate this with what you have. So we have done five currencies. I've given you at least several of the setups that I expect to be happening and what I expect to be happening on these currencies. So you can take this, use it with your own analysis and come up with something concrete. These are not signals. We're only showing you how we break down the markets and the approach and process we use to arrive at a trade decision. That is the main reason why we do these videos. So that's it from us. Hope you enjoyed, loved the videos. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And finally, make sure you invite your friends to come and give us some good feedback and some views. So cheers, guys.